Good afternoon class, welcome to daily paper analysis of the Hindu. So let us go with today's news, okay, fine. So Adhanis, it is still under discussion every other day, whatever the news that is important, well it gets to an end, then we will be discussing about Adhanis, okay. So far what are important that we will be seeing, yeah, so what is this article? Top court upholds constitution of JNK delimitation panel. So, what is this article about? So, you know, article 370. So, the, that 370 was banned, and Jammu and Kashmir, before to that banning, it was uh, that removal of 370. Before that, Jammu and Kashmir used to have a different constitution and it was having a special provision, right? So, what happened by uh, removing this particular article 370, they have split this particular Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories, one is Ladakh, another one is Jammu, okay. So, that is what happened. Now, what is the issue? So, all the splitting or delimitation, what is this delimitation? Limiting or deciding the territories of particular state or union territories, that is your delimitation and this particular uh, power is vested with whom? with the parliament of India. So yeah, what is this article says, Supreme Court on Monday dismissed the challenge of the, to the constitution of India, the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir delimitation commission to readjust consciences in the new union territory. So in the form of new, just a moment, yeah, in the new form territory, they have dismissed a particular uh, challenge, challenge that Jammu and Kashmir delimitation whatever the readjustment is there it will be uh, whatever it is there it will be as it is so you cannot ask for the readjustment of existing constituencies so for that they have stated certain articles constitution articles they have stated just a moment okay Yes. So, for that what happened? They have stated these articles. So, your part 1 of Indian constitution deals with the union and its territories. So, in that part articles 2 and 3 are used for this delimitation. So, it gives empowerment or it give us, gives its power to parliament on deciding or creation of new states or territories. Okay. So, article 2 of the constitution enables the parliament to create new states or union territories. Accordingly, the two new union territories have been created. So, the Jammu Reorganization, JNK, which is Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act, which created the two new union territories, assigns the role of readjustments of the constituencies to the Delimitation Commission under Delimitation Act 2002. So, that was an act made for delimitation which empowers parliament to create new states and its territories. So, that is what they have mentioned and a law made under a law made under article 3 can always provide a readjustment of the constituencies in the newly constituted states and union territory through delimitation commission. Hence, we hold that there is no illegality associated with the establishment of delimitation commission under the order of March 6, 2020 a bunch of justices has told. So, what is this article about? It says that there was a challenge towards Supreme Court stating that they are delimiting our particular states into different constituencies, okay. So, it is under their own whims and fantasies of delimitation commission which is not acceptable by our Jammu and Kashmir, that is what the plea. But what Supreme Court has upheld, it has told that through article 2 and 3, the power is completely vested with Parliament of India to decide and delimit and there will be a particular commission called delimitation commission which was being established through the act, delimitation act, delimitation, delimitation commission act of 2002 through which they will be deciding on its own territories and constituencies. So, there is no wrong in that, that is what Supreme Court has upheld, okay. So, in that what are the articles that they have mentioned? Article 2 and Article 3 of your part 1 of constitution, okay. So, there is nothing wrong, it is not illegality, that is what they have mentioned. So, yeah. Retail inflation. So, we will be having, uh, when you are discussing about economy, you would be knowing about what is this retail inflation. 
what is core inflation, what is retail inflation, there will be a basket of commodities on which inflation will be targeted, on which every quarter the respective inflation will be targeted and the achievable or achieved inflation would be mentioned. So, here what it says is that there is So, what this article says is that retail inflation rises to 6.52 percent in January at 3 month high. So, compared to the last 3 months, it was almost record high of 6.52 percent. Generally, we have an inflation targeting which varies from 2 to 6 percent. So, RBI keeps this monitoring that there should be inflation which is to be targeted to be the minimum to be 2 percent and the maximum would be 6 percent. Okay. But what happened here? It has increased to 6.52 percent than the required inflation. So, India's retail inflation shot up to 6.52 percent in the two months streak below 6 percent mark with the consumer food prices hardening through 5.9 percent from 4.2 percent. So, you need to know what is this consumer price index, wholesale price index, price deflator, all these you need to know. So, once when you are clear with once you are clear with your economy part, this would be easy. So, just go refer what is wholesale inflation and consumer price inflation, okay. So, that is about that article, nothing much. Let me go to next one, yes. Geosciences committee calls for, just a moment. So, yeah. Geosciences committee, community calls for broad panel of experts to power heritage bill. So, currently there was a bill introduced which is called power heritage, sorry, to heritage bill. So, what is this heritage bill? Not power, is a heritage bill, but this particular geosciences community have called for broad panel of experts. That means, they are going to consult expertise on to bill, on to frame this particular bill of heritage. So, what is this heritage bill? A draft bill aimed to protect India's geological heritage that includes fossil sedimentary rocks, natural structures has raised alarm in India's geosciences paleontology community. So, what is this about? It is a draft bill on to protect. So, its aim is to protect the ancient wise data. What are those ancient history's data would be your fossils? would be your, what is this paleontology? Something that deals with your fossil materials. So, any sedimentation, anything steady of that. Good afternoon, Kriti. So, yeah, what happened here? This particular community is asking or has been communicating with expertise community of paleontology and geosciences on what can be the possibilities to protect our geosciences. Okay. So, that can be our fossils or sedimentary rocks, natural structures or anything that is our art and culture which is protecting our history, which is still sustaining our history. For that, this particular bill has been there. So, the draft herito, uh, geo heritage sites and geo relics preservation and maintenance bill 2022. So, go refer this particular bill. It will be there in your Lok Sabha or Raj Sabha website. Okay. You can see this particular bill, what is the draft note of this. So, just go and refer it. Okay. Fine. So, while deemed necessary to several researchers, West Power entirely with the Geological Survey of India, 170 year old organization that comes under Ministry of Mines. So, Geosciences which is Geological Survey of India is a department which comes under Ministry of Mines that you need to again understand. So, the provisions of the bill give it give its power to declare sites as Geo Heritage Sites. So, we already have certain kinds of heritage sites. So, in the same way, it will empower GSA, which is Geological Survey of India, it will empower it to give or to name particular site as Geo Heritage Site or Geo Relic. Okay. So, that is about this article. Once the draft is being framed and exposed to public, we can further discuss about it. In governance part, this, these, uh, these particular schemes are important. So, you can directly mention even in your art and culture too, if there is any question post on what are the government steps to protect our culture, our history, then you can add on, okay. 
next local news local news so all these are local news yes important so yesterday i mean the previous current affairs session i told that aero india 2023 has been started so what is this aero india 2023 it is your defense operation or defense exercise expo basically like a project you have a project expo right in your schools you would have done in the same way this is aero india defense yeah Aero India Defence Expo, which will be a collaboration with different countries. So currently, this is the first year where different countries have participated into this Aero India. Almost 80 other countries. See, 80 countries have participated into Aero India 2023. They have showcased their own state of art and their own privileged defence products into our expo. So yes. No, not yet. Kriti Singh. So they told that it has not been given to approval. It is still under the expert committee. So they are uh, they are in the search that they will be gathering this expert's opinion and then it will be reviewed. Okay. So that is what I told. Once we get this approvals or once this draft bill has been passed in at least one of the houses, we will get the details about it. Okay. So as of now, they are going to consult the expert committee. So that is what about this article. Next. So. So, Aero India Expo showcases India's self-confidence, says PM. So, we are working on Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Okay, just a moment. So, in detail, if you want, we can just check also. Yeah, just a moment. Even let me also clarify on this. We can, I'll also show the website where you can check. Let's see. No problem because something that is important or something that is new, we need to learn. Mm, let me copy that article. This is page 7. Okay. See the article name. No, Geo. No, no, tell me the bill name. Preservation. Let me write it as bill, we will get it. This is 2021. There is no proper news on this. Okay. Geo heritage sites and geo relics. So same article, this is from Paper Hindu. Yeah. So this is from your Mines, Ministry of Mines website where you can directly see the notice for public consideration. So this particular notification if you download, Power Heritage Bill, not Power Heritage Bill. It is geo heritage bill, it is to power heritage bill. That means it is empowering. It's not like power heritage bill, it is a geo heritage bill. Okay. So this is your article, sorry, your draft, which is draft geo heritage sites and geo relics preservation and maintenance bill. So if you can go through this, 
what there will be there is basically it is a notice for public consultation so it is open for discussion through public there should be in, in, in like interaction between the public and government right they need to take our opinions on that expert opinions different ngos so all the governance uh, bodies they need to take their opinion and then they have to proceed so here it is open for public opinion where they need to consult on expertise or people and then they will come up with this proper bill so as of now it is in the consultation phase so that is correct only which I have mentioned. So you can just download this and you can read it if you want. It's around 18 pages, so it will not take much time. You can just go ahead with that. Okay? It is not power heritage bill. Next. So yeah. So this expo, what is this? Oh, fine. So this year, exhibition in Bangalore has participation of more than 80 countries along with the defense 800 defense firms which comprise of 100 foreign and 700 Indian companies. So this is the first time ever and it is a biannual, biannual expo that means two years once you will be having this particular expo. So this, art, this particular article is important what are the outcomes of this particular Aero India is also important. What is our main aim? Atmanirbha Bharat showcasing our defense structures and asking for investments collaboration at the same time selling our defense mechanisms or defense infrastructure to our conclave. So we have seen no friendly nations so we will be having a particular foreign policies, deals, agreements. So the perception setting a target, so what is a target that is important, setting a target to take defense exports from 1.5 billion to 5 billion by 24-25, so by the year, by the next fiscal year 24-25, what is our target? Current exports of defense is 1.5 billion dollars, whereas our target will be 5 billion dollars by 24-25. That you need to understand. So that is our target. In defense, you can add it on. So yeah, that's all. Nothing is there in this article. So he has, uh, Mr. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also mentioned that we are proud of our indigenous technologies that is being going on in defense sector. So what are the current indigenous technologies? You can see one of the greatest or prestigious project is our INS Vikrant. So what is INS Vikrant? It is a carrier. So aircraft carrier, aircraft carrier is your Vikrant, okay? That you need to understand. Next. UK for tie up high end defense technologies. So when compared, the, there is a defense news and US is showing interest to have defense ties with India. Terming the need for the strong relationship between India and UK, mission critical. So what is the name? Mission critical is the one UK Minister for Defense Procurement Alex Sharp pitched for collaboration in high end defense technologies including jet engine technology which he said were essential to preserve territorial integrity and to stand up for the international rules based on which India is important part of. So here it is ensuring that we need defense procurement with India. So it is like a bilateral trade of defense technologies. For what? To maintaining our sovereignty, to protect our borders. India is also a keen place. That is what UK has mentioned. Okay? Fine. So it all, he also pitched for cooperation in supply chain resilience which would brought the four in the war in Ukraine and India's strength in it. So yesterday we have seen, I mean in the before class we have seen an article that wheat exports has been growing. It has a huge chance for India to be growing. Why? Because of ongoing Ukraine war. So that is what again they are spelling that even leaving the defense apart, we still need lot of ties with India where it would ensure the supply chain management. Okay, that is what this article is about, nothing more than that. And Kriti, you were asking about me in the previous session about article 105. So today there was an editorial on that. So just go refer that editorial, it's very good. So you can just go through that. Where it was questioning what is this article 105 is that, parliamentary people will be there, like ministers will be there, whenever they are going to discuss something, discuss and debate. So sometimes they may pose like uh, if there is another minister, they try to criticize that particular minister. There will be certain allegations on some other minister, right? So that is acceptable and it is not under the purview of judiciary. So judiciary, it will give the particular minister a resistance wall. So it is a protective wall, which is article 105, where the minister can speak whatever he intend or she intends to speak. 
Okay, so Article 105 gives protection to its ministers in a parliament as long as they discuss. So this is about a freedom of speech and expression of the ministers present during in the parliament, present during the session of parliament. So they can speak, but in this article they have mentioned that yes, you can speak. And why this issue has come is that during the motion of thanks given by president, so the opposition or uh, these people, opposition or the people who are in their leader leadership, so both people can give, can address the president. So current president, Miss, Miss Draupada Murmu, sorry Draupadi Murmu, Murmu. So the opposition party has claimed something. So during this motion of thanks, one thing you need to understand that motion of thanks is something which is followed as part of British parliament in the same lines we are following it. It does not have any constitutional backup and through article 105 it is the minister who can speak whatever they want okay i mean if they are discussing anything it cannot be under the preview of judiciary so it is that particular speaker and the rules of procedure of that particular house that may be lok sabha or the rajya sabha to decide on what should be the manner of criticism the manner of allegations okay so the article speaks about it and through motion of things basically uh, the people whoever are there, the ministers whoever are speaking or who is giving, articulating their, uh, their uh, reply to the president, they might criticize, basically that is what happening. They criticize on the existing government. Politically there will be a speech. So that uh, engraved or that aggrieved the people in position. So speaker has aggrieved on that. So there is a rules of procedure they have mentioned about uh, your rule number 315 or 323. Just go through that article, it is very important for you. Okay, your editorial page, that article is important. I think it's somewhere here. Yes, this is the article. House rules and the weapon of expunction, that means being completely removed. So here they have mentioned about articles, rule number 353 and other rules. Rule number 380, rule number 261, not very important, but if you are being very specific about your answer, that will be good. So, article 105 guarantees rules, uh, sorry, freedom of speech and expression of minister during their ambient of parliament, okay. And uh, this particular rule says that which this particular article, sorry, rule number 353 in Lok Sabha says that whenever a particular minister is being alleged, suppose I am being a minister. I have uh, something to criticize or something to allege on one particular minister. So when I am trying to allege or when I have, when I am trying to uh, say something allegations on that particular minister, I need to inform that minister as well as the speaker priorly. That says article 353. Even if it is correct, genuine, whatever it is the case, I need to inform them priorly. Okay, so that's what article 353 says. I think it's clear for you, Kriti. Okay. So just go through this article, it's very good. So you have this, there is a question about your defamation and if there is any question of defection, all this can be seen in this article, okay, fine. So skipping all your editorials, next, yeah. So this article, this goes a long trend, whenever there is an important one in this. So I have told that there is a growing issues between execute, executive and who, sorry, between the legislature and judiciary. So currently there is this ties going on where these people are worried about their delays of appointment whereas executive or legislature or basically the parliament is telling that we do not have a, a proper memorandum of procedure. So give us your memorandum of procedure and give us the timeline so that we will also act accordingly. And they are asking for the efficiency or eligibility and suitability of existing appointments of judges. So what is the way that collegium is? following that you need to know yes good good kriti fine next so law ministry issues scoffs of criticism or appointment of ex sc judges governor so you need to understand s abdul nazir so ex chief justice sorry ex justice yeah supreme court justice who nazir where is this abdul nazir he has been appointed as a governor of Andhra Pradesh. So there was a speculation that, so this is a common, common issue that is be, that will be repeating whenever a particular judiciary person is being appointed into legislature, it, it, sorry, into an executive, then there will be a question of what? On efficiency of working of different bodies. So here what is the question is that, 
the post to who is Riju, Kiran Riju or Kiran Riju is our union law minister. So, it has been questioned that why have you appointed an ex chief justice of Supreme Court, Kari, uh, sorry, Nazir, Abdul Nazir as a governor. Is it it a issue with separation of judiciary, separation of judiciary or independence of judiciary? Isn't it threatening to independence of judiciary or not? How it is being threatened? So, when I suppose let us say I am a chief justice of Supreme Court, okay. Let me be a chief justice of Supreme Court. Now, before me, Mr. Abdul Nazir, let me take any person X. So, after doing certain favorable things to the existing government, this person post retirement has got a particular position as governor or let us say any executive position. So, now me being in the next position of Supreme Court judge, I will be having a thought that not me, basically anyone. So, if I am favoring the particular government, post retirement I will have a chance to go into executive. So, there is a conflict of interest ad existing there which is threatening the independence of judiciary independence of judiciary or independent judiciary which is again the basic structure of constitution which has been guaranteed through what? Keshwananda Bharti case. It has been mentioned that basic structure doctrine was there in which independent judiciary is also one. So, out of this they have asked here Mohit Pashwan. Yes, good afternoon. So, they have posed that this is the issue. So, if you are selecting some person from judiciary, then it would affect the existing or before retirement, it would exist, it would pose a threat to having proper justice. So, they will have their conflict of interest when they are working on particular judgment. So, when they came to ask me a favor, then I will tend to be partial towards them being a judge because post retirement they will be offering me, right. So, that is an issue which they have mentioned. But for that, what Riju has mentioned? So, that is a criticism. For that, what Mr. Riju has given the answer? He has mentioned that constitutionally, they are aware of every little thing. Being a person from judiciary, they know every little thing present in the constitution. So, if they are into executive, they will be the efficient person. So, he has mentioned here that the whole ecosystem is once again a full swing on appointment of a governor. They should better understand that they can no more treat India as their personal fiefdom. And now India will be guided by the people of India as per the provisions of constitution of India. So, that is what he has mentioned. That means, if I am a no, 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 Kriti, that is not a not against basic structure doctrine, but the speculations that means the criticism growing criticism is that. So, it is against the independence of independent nature of judiciary. So, which is guaranteed by your basic structure. No, independent judiciary is again your basic structure doctrine. Judiciary itself, whatever the judicial review, everything is your basic structure, right? So, they are telling that it might pose a threat to this. But what Mr. Riju has told that no other person would be more efficient than the person who already know about the provisions of constitution. That is what this article says. Is it clear for you now? Understood? That is not against basic structure. I, I should make my point clear. That is not against basic structure. It is just a speculation argument towards the existing policy. Every time whenever a judiciary person is taken into this particular uh, government, then this type of uh, issues will come constantly. Yeah, so that is about this article. Let us see, we have any other articles to be discussed. Yes, so this is one article, a small article. Let us see, PM to open Trifets Adi Mahotsav. So, what is this Trifed? Tribal Cooperative Market Development. Let me zoom it. So, Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation of India Limited. So, for this, Prime Minister has opened Adi Mahotsav, something that is focusing on development of tribal. So, Prime Minister will inaugurate Adi Mahotsav festival on Thursday, Major Dhyanchan Stadium in New Delhi, says who? Tribal Minister Arjun Munda has told that they will be inaugurating this particular festival. So, this Adi Mahotsav is Trifets Cooperative Marketing. So, is a flagship event which will uh, feature the exhibition come sale of handicrafts, jewelry, basically their state of art or their way of, um, their culture or their handicrafts. 
which can yield them some money. That can be their jewelry or there can be their pottery, food, naturally availability, like natural available forest materials, forest products, minor forest products, or bamboo, cane, paintings, handloom, everything. They are artisans. Every work would be presented into this particular expo. Okay. Next, this article. I say HR not rewriting history, only filling gaps, says minister. The body has taken a project to expand history by incorporating major historic events, personalities, incidents, says Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan. Why this issue has come? So one thing, a politically here what is happening is that, so before this 75 years of independence, so we have this particular 75 years which we have celebrated so far, okay. Amrut Mahotsav. So, we have been celebrating this particular 75 years of independence before to this. So, let me take to your time till 2014 or 2013. Most probably independence meet independence struggle or independence or freedom struggle or anything that is related to your modern history mostly lies related to your who? Congress. Okay. So, I am not mentioning or I am not being partial towards any, any political party, I am being clear. I am just wanted to, I was just want to tell you why this issue has come. So, currently after the existing political party has come into picture, they started widening up that the existing or the, the freedom struggle which has happened till 1947 was not alone with these people and it was a broadened struggle where some other freedom fighters have also been involved into okay so yeah that is what they have mentioned and in part of that there was one thing that has been happening as of now is that indian council of historical research what they are trying to do is they are trying to gather on whatever are the data whatever are the history that is being left over even the freedom fighters who have been unheard i'll show you that unsung there was one particular document that has been released. You can just go through that also. So, you can add. So, whichever is important, we need to spend time. No choice with that. That is why I am telling you. So, during our Amrut Kal Mahotsav, So, here you can see they have given different leaders. I wanted to check just a moment. Yeah. So, they have mentioned about different other independence struggle, strugglers, leaders also, freedom fighters also. They have mentioned, see in Patna, Ram Krishna Simha, Arwal, then different areas, different leader. So, what basically the current government is trying to do, they are widening up the freedom struggle. They are showcasing the unsung heroes of freedom struggle. So, that is why they have launched this and the programs that they are being conducting is to make other people know that there are other freedom struggle people also, like other freedom fighters also who have yielded us our freedom today. Okay. So, why this statement has come is that they are, they are asking that you are uh, rewriting the existing history because so far many of the people know that it was through Congress who people have fought against Britishers. But now what they are doing in the each different nook and corner, whoever are fi who have fighted against, who have fought against Britishers, they are making them, they are giving them limelight. So due to which they are diluting the existence of Congress leaders. INC basically. Congress in the sense not today's Congress, it's about INC which I am speaking about, Indian National Congress. So, for that as a justification, Union Minister has told that we are not rewriting the history, we are making people know, we are trying to fill our gaps in the history by inculcating or by introducing them into your education system. That is what this article says. So, you need to know the backdrop and then you need to understand the article. Okay. So, yeah, we are expanding history and filling gaps by incorporating major historical events, personalities and incidents. That is what they have done. So, currently they have uh, launched it into website and now they are trying to take it into education side. So, education, uh, trying to inculcate into your education system. Okay. 
So that is about this article. Nothing more than that. So you just go through this. That's all. So they are trying to make it into your books. So it is not a body which is rewriting, but making everyone acknowledge the freedom struggle by those fighters. Okay. Next. 12 South Africans as part of your environment, important, 12 South African cheetahs going to land in India on Saturday. So, regeneration program. So, basically they are shifting, shift and lift of cheetahs from South Africa to India. So, after months of delay, dozen wild cheetahs of from South Africa will finally arrive on Saturday to which park? Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Is it not visible? Okay. Kuno National Park of Madhya Pradesh where 8 such felons were brought from Namibia last year. So last year exactly that was the first time after so many decades that they have airlifted some cheetahs from Namibia and now it is a continuation of that particular project to Kuno National Park of Madhya Pradesh where 12 South, sorry 12 South African cheetahs are being reintroduced into our ecology or our environment. Okay. Nice. Next. So yeah. Some specifications like 7 males and 5 females will be taken as part of this 12, 7 plus 5. Okay. Nothing more than that. Next. So, 86,912 crores released as GST compensation to all the states up to May 31st, 2022. So, there was a uh, agreement from uh, central government during introduction of GST that if there is any taxation loss that has been occurred to state governments due to the introduction of GST, we will be compensating them. That was the thing which was agreed between center and sorry among center and states. So, in that speculation they have allocated 86,912 crores to different states based on their taxation levels, based on their impact on their economy. This taxation will be distributed. This taxation, taxating amount or compensation of GST, GST compensation fund will be allocated to states. Entire article is about that, just go through it, that is enough. Nothing more than that to discuss in this, okay. Next, yeah, this is done. Yes. So, the ongoing drama between US and China. So, now what China is alleging on US, that US itself has launched more billions, around 10 billions into our airspace, says China. Because now everyone are arguing that China is launching. Now, US has in you know, open media and the international media has told that China is targeting 40 other more countries including India, sorry, including US. So, that is why we have shot it down. So, in opposing that, what China has told, it is not as, it is the US who has been launching 10 balloons into our own environment, our own sovereign land. That is about this article. So, this will be ongoing saga. So, once it comes to end, then we can discuss more. So far, nothing is there, only that they have mentioned. Next, yes, Saudi Arabia to send its first woman to space. When you are discussing about Saudi Arabia, generally the speculation that we will get in mind is Muslim country, Muslim dominated country and women are restricted to home, huge restrictions on their marriage or Sharia laws that are them, they are following to the core. So, to break that speculations, they have been, they are trying this or they are into this mission where they are going to send its first woman into space. Who is she? Rayana Barnavi. 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 So, she is the one who is being sent to outer space, into the space mission along with other male astronaut. Okay. So, Saudi Arabia will send its first ever woman astronaut into space mission later this year. The state media has reported to move to revamp the kingdom's ultra conservative Im image. That means to counter the image of their um, Saudi Arabia being a conservative nation. To counter that image, what they are doing? They are doing or they are going to send this particular woman into space along with some other astronaut. So that says and that will be in the second quarter of 2023 which they have mentioned says that space that particular Saudi Arabia media. So the crew astronauts will join AX2 space mission and the space will launch from USA that particular flight will be launched from USA and through the mission called AX2 that is important that is all nothing more than that. Next. 
So, online students, you can stop me anywhere if you have any doubts. So, another thing, we know that in the previous year budget, so previous year budget for the first time, India Finance Minister, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman has introduced that we will be charging on cryptocurrencies too. So, anything that you are buying, even your digital assets will be charged. Gifting it to someone else will also be charged. So, that is what we have introduced. Very few countries have taxation or charging capacity or yeah, uh, having a particular eye on or trying to get grip on uh, this cryptocurrency and to remove or to, uh, to uh, what we can say, completely to remove this opaque nature of cryptocurrency. Very few countries have started levying taxation on that and started trying to figure out ways on how you can break the chain. Okay. So, to make visibility, to have this visibility of cryptocurrency. Why we need this visibility? Cryptocurrency works on your blockchain technology. So, where you never know who is the first person to start that particular chain and where it will end. So, some each particular person will have a only packet of information. So, whatever I know the other person would not be knowing, the data which I share, the amount which I transact, whatever I do will be between me and the other person and the next other person will never be knowing it. So, trace backing or tracing this particular chain is the ultimate agenda of India and also other countries like US and all. So, with that particular, uh, in that in mind, this is one article which has addressing this. So, India discussing with G20 nations on SOP to regulate crypto, says who? Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. So, Nirmala Sitaraman on Monday said India was discussing with G20 member countries to develop a standard operating protocol. That means, how you will be following each and individual step. Now, cryptocurrency is not a boundary one. So, it is a boundaryless and limitless way of communication or transactions where a person sitting in India can transact with some other country, some other country person without knowing their face. Only their IDs are required. So, Nirbha Sitaraman has told that has, is being under the discussions to regulate this particular cryptocurrencies where they will be having a standard operating procedure protocol, a particular states rules and regulations on tracing down the cryptocurrencies. Okay, fine. Legality. So, whenever there is a bill or whenever there is an act on a particular topic, then definitely that is legal. So, as of now, cryptocurrencies are under the ambient nose. Just now I am discussing that yes, cryptocurrencies are going to be under the taxation. So, these are all like grey areas through the advancement of technology or through the growing people, certain changes will be occurring in the governance system. So, currently this is one such changes. It is not illegal. So, they are trying to legalize it very well. That is one of the favor, favorable step towards it. I think it is clear for you Mohit. Okay. Next. In the G20 we are raising it and having detailed discussions with the members with the standard operating pro protocol emerges which results a coherent comprehensive approach where all countries work together in bringing some regulations. Definitely because we have lot of income that is being transacted every day. Terrorist groups or any other negative goods they are being transacted through only this particular cryptocurrencies. They have completely shifted towards it. So, you never know which country is going to wage war on some other country. So, these are the negative impacts and the same time the positive impacts, ma'am, also suggest current affairs related questions for answer writing. Okay, Mohit Pashwan, great. So, you want me to suggest current affairs related questions, great. Fine, I will discuss with the team and I will let you know on that, I will update you on that, okay. That can be a positive step, it is good, I will check with the team and I will update on that. If possible, I can give you, no problem, okay. Fine. So, that is about this article. Next. Projects approved by MOHA which is your Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So, these many projects have been approved, just a data, not much required, but yeah. So, through Amrit scheme, 6,527 projects have been approved by who? MOHUA, which is your Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Okay. So, that is about this article. Then, let us go to the other one. 
this is not much important but when you are discussing about health um, when, I was, uh, when I was talking in a class for UPSC guide I have been discussing about SNT and your, when I was discussing about your pre previous year questions PYQs for mains there is definitely a possibility of asking a question on your health especially post COVID-19 there was an expected question on your health. So that is why I have taken up this article else I would have not picked up. So what is this article says? Tackling postpartum depression. So many of the people would have witnessed if they are married or if your cousin, someone, any other woman is under pregnancy and post pregnancy, you would have seen that they will be yelling or they will be under depression. So people basically tend to ignore. When we talk about this psychological issue, so just I wanted to tell you that psychological issue are being misspelt as their behavioral issues. People think that it is their behavior on which is triggering other person's mood. Okay. Psychological issues is not in that way. It's not their wanted behavior on how they'll react. It can be some kind of mental disorder. So this article speaks about postpartum, a woman can witness, yes, a woman can witness issues of mental depression which can possibly threaten or which can possibly lead to bipolar disorder. So that is about this article. So what is bipolar disorder? Bipolar, two poles, two poles of, two extreme poles of emotions. Number one can be extreme happiness, number two can be extreme sadness. So all the negative emotions to be one extreme, all the positive emotions to be on one extreme. So if they are happy, people tend to think that yes, she is happy, she is very happy. At the same time when she is very sad, people or she, here it is about she, that is why I mentioned completely about she, so about her basically, about a woman I am targeting about. So if she is very sad, they try to speculate that that is a, her basic nature, a fault in her behavior or in her character, but no, this particular research says that almost, see in 2017 it shows that in India itself, the prevalence of postpartum uh, depression was around 22% in 2017. That means in around 1 in 5, pe five women, post 1 in 5 women post pregnancy will be having this particular postpartum depression, which not addressed well can be leading to worsening case of bipolar disorder. Okay, that is about this article. So if a person develops psychotic depression or the depression is severe, there is a high risk of dying by suicide. So suicidal tendency once not addressed could lead to the worst case of suicidal issues. So that is why be lovable to your people, to your people around you. Don't hurt them with your feelings. So yeah, in such situations healthcare workers advise more aggressive interventions. So here another thing which is important is what are the steps that are taken? So one thing you need to understand, okay, identifying postpartum depression is fine. We can consult them to the doctor, we can give some medication. No. Postpartum, that means after pregnancy, women cannot consume any kind of medications until unless prescribed, even if it is prescribed, they tend to avoid because it might have negative impact on the child. So they will not be given any medication basically. So to address this kind of issues, what is necessary? Some kind of counseling is necessary. So cognitive therapy. CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy is the one which is interpersonal uh, therapy which is being recommended to people who are of postpartum, to women who are undergoing this postpartum issues, okay. So CBT is talking about a therapy that helps people by changing the way they think it has to be uh, and behave. It is based on the premise thoughts, feelings, physical sensations and actions that are interconnected and that negative thoughts and feelings can trap into a vicious cycle. CBT attempts to restructure faulty patterns of thinking to more positive and logical one. So basically it is a counseling method. So CBT is the one which is important of this article. So this is a postmortem depression which is having a growing trend in current women. So that is what you need to address. So that is about this article. Nothing much. Everything I have given other details and all. So not required. So yeah. Would might lead to any kind of suicidal issues. All these things have been mentioned. So it might lead to bipolar disorder or any kind of suicide. So that is about this article, nothing more than that. So yeah, that's it. Yes. So that's it for today. If you have any doubts, you can post me what are the steps to be, should be taken to tackle postmortem depression. That is what we have told, no, CBT. So that is as part of your, when you recognize that they are going to ongoing tradition. So I would like to tell that 
as part of governance it should be mandated by the government of india through a scheme that women whoever are going to postpartum that means after uh, pregnancy it should be a continuum of class that means there should be a sessions of counseling people think that going to counseling make them feel like they are mental or some kind of negative impact is there suppose if if i say to a particular person in our opinion yes in our opinion only if i say to a particular person that you have some kind of psychological issue go check with your psychiatrist will it be offensive or not why because society is thinking that it is suppose if a particular person only cbt no 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 that is what i'm saying if a particular person so it is about the mindset change that needs to be that is that needs to be triggered in the minds of society and next it is about the family environment that they need to cope up with and other thing that is so this kind of tendency of depression would come when people are basically have their more time spending alone so don't be alone be with people try to share with more mo share more with the people or with your loved ones next through governance policy i told you compulsory counseling techniques so we have a lot of policies addressing for women employment and all we have she team we have also suppose in corporates if you can see there is a particular uh, addressing cell where you can go and discuss about your depression and also you have this manas manas app where you can dial and you can talk about your depression or your suicidal tendencies this needs to be uh, taken into the decentralization it needs to be taken to the roots to even to rural areas it should not be speculated that it should be ending here only only in the urban areas this is witnessing no any woman is woman even if if she is at the lower end or at the topper end or the toppest end both are same so that needs to be there so if you can take that is a social stigma then economical wise so people with the insecurities some people might get due to the ongoing changes of their body they might get upset so physical activity then economic economical wise giving them more opportunities to work on even as a work from home tendencies so not losing their jobs all these are different kinds of uh, things so if you wanted to discuss about any kind of problem that you need to address you need to think in a social wise what can be the possibilities to reduce any issue any issue you need to have addressing ways social economic perspective then cultural perspective would be in social only but yeah socio economical then political or governance if there is anything related to environment then environmental perspective what is socio economic political cultural yes here you can cover international so whenever you are addressing a particular issue you need to have all these things yes great thank you so i think that's it for today thank you for the session good day